What is going on, beautiful people of the world? My name is Garrett Wolf, and I am the host of the number one podcast for people who are trying to go from saggy flabs to six-pack abs. I've built my body over the last eight years, and in the last three years, I've helped hundreds of online clients shred unwanted fat and embody the best version of themselves. Now, let's jump right into today's show. What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Alpha Movement Podcast. This is the number one show for people who are trying to go from saggy flabs to six-pack abs, all without giving up the most enjoyable aspects of their life. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the number one reason why people fail at a fitness journey, all right? I was trying to figure out how to shorten that title down. I probably will post-production, but this is the number one reason most people fail when they start or, you know, when they try to continue continue a fitness journey because as you guys know I always throw around the statistic that 80% of dieters regain the weight that they lost 6 to 12 months down the line right I know I bring up that statistic all the time but it's quite frightening right 80% 8 out of 10 people 80 out of 100 people will fail a diet they'll lose weight initially and then they'll regain it 6 to 12 months down the line why is this why is it so hard for people to stick to a diet plan why is it so hard for people to stick with going to the gym with a fitness plan with the nutrition plan, with some steps, with drinking some water. I'm going to be talking about all that, breaking it down, letting you guys why I think that I know the reason why 80% of people fail. And I think I know how if I can kind of switch your framework and turn around your perspective a little bit, give you a little bit of other perspective, some of my insights, then you might be able to dial that down, dial that uh, 80% number down and actually become one of the 20% that breaks through and actually sticks to their fitness goals. All right, you guys already know the deal. If at any point during today's episode, you enjoy what I have to say, or you take some value from this podcast, please screenshot my face. Share it to your Instagram stories, tag me at underscore Garrett Wolf, and I will reshare it to my story and send you a free gift. Other than that, guys, I want to talk about the number one reason most people, 80% of people, cannot stick to their fitness journey and they end up failing, whatever you want to say, you know, failing, flopping on their face, kind of forgetting, giving up their fitness goals and just completely kind of going back to normal reality, normal uh, normal life and just living as a either a skinny fat person or just a morbidly obese person, frankly, for the lack of better term, because you know, most people are actually obese, right? In America, it's like three out of five people are obese. It's like the majority of people are either overweight or obese. And it's because, you know, 80% of them, they fail and they regain the weight that they lost six to 12 months down the line. And I wanted to talk about this because I had two clients in the past week come and message me and they were like, I'm not losing weight. I'm not making any progress. Like, what should I do? Should I switch up the, the diet? Should we switch up the macros? Should we switch up the calorie plan? And I was like, whoa, 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 hold your freaking horses. All right. Hold your horses. Let me look at your stats. Let me look at your profile. Let me see what the hell is going on. All right. And then I would go in there and I would look at their profile and I would be like, no fucking shit. This guy's been on the plan for a week. This guy's been on the plan for one week and he wants to switch it up after not seeing progress after just seven days, one week. Another person messaged me the same thing. They're like, I'm not losing weight. I actually gained a few pounds last week. Like, what's going on? What's going on? I look at their program. They had been on the diet plan for three days, for three days, not to mention they didn't follow the calories that I laid out for them over that three days. So they didn't even follow the plan and they were only on the plan for three days. So the reason I think I think I've nailed it. I think I dialed it down. The number one reason people cannot stick to a diet or people fail on their fitness journey is that they just simply do not give it enough time. And I'm seeing, I'm learning this in my, in my own life with like a lot of my um, recent activities, right? Because I'm five and a half weeks out from my first bodybuilding show and I'm learning a lot of things. I'm learning a lot of, making a lot of breakthroughs, making a lot of progress in my own fitness journey, in my own fitness life. And I'm frankly learning skills that are going to aid me in my fitness career for the rest of my life. So I'm really, really excited about that. And one of the things I'm noticing is the longer I'm in the diet, not only the harder it gets, but also the more results you start to see. So I'm starting to correlate this, um, this certain level of complexity, this level of difficulty with the amount of progress that I'm making. And here's what I mean by that is like, you know, I started off losing kind of a steady half a pound to one pound every single week. Then my weight kind of came to a halt, right? My weight kind of came to a halt around 155, but I'm still lowering in, um, in body fat, right? My body fat is lowering and my muscle is gaining, but my weight is staying stagnant. So a little bit of caloric repartitioning is going on where I'm kind of losing weight. 
um, losing fat and gaining muscle at the same time. But if I was just looking at the scale, I would be like, yo, it's not working. I'm not losing weight. I'm not losing weight. And it's hard to see these visual changes in the mirror, especially yourself. This is why it's better to have a coach look over your plan, look over your progress picks, and let you know if you're losing fat or gaining muscle. Because when you're looking at yourself every single day in the mirror, especially when you're quite judgmental, you know, like us bodybuilders, we are quite judgmental. We're always looking at the thing that's wrong. We're always looking at the area that has the most fat. We're not really focused on the progress that we're actually making, unfortunately. It's like kind of just a mental thing that goes on. So... You know, it's hard for me to see these changes, especially on myself. Um, but the thing is, is like the lower in body fat percentage you go, the more results you're going to see. It's like if someone who's 20% body fat and then they go down to 19%, you're not really going to see much of a change. Even an experienced coach is going to have a hard time looking at that change and being like, yep, you're definitely losing fat, even though the scale's not moving. Like I can see you were 20% last week. Now you're 19%, right? That's going to be hard to see. Now, if you were 20% and you went to 12%, that would be instantaneous. You'd be able to see that. But when you get to lower and lower body fat levels, like my scale estimates me at 9.9% .9 body fat as of this morning. And so as I'm, you know, the scale is staying at the same weight, 155 pretty much every single day. And my body fat on the scale stays more or less the same. It drops a little bit every day, right? Just a little by like 0.1 or 0.2. But in the mirror, I can see every single day more and more veins kind of popping up on my own body, right? And that's how I know I'm getting leaner and leaner is like that visual aspect because of being only, you know, around 10, maybe 11% if the scale is off, you know, giving a little bit of air there for the scale, a little bit of room for air is even if I'm 10, 11, 12%, each percent I go down is more and more of my percentage of fat. So it's like, you know, 12% of 150 pounds could be like 20 pounds or whatever. I'm not a math magician. So don't quote me on that. But you know, 20 pounds of fat on my body going down to around 18 or 17 is going to be incredibly noticeable. Whereas someone who has like 60 pounds of fat on their body, and they go from 60 to 55, it's not going to be as noticeable. And the scale could not move. You, you know what I'm saying? The scale could not move, it could stay the same. But you could be gaining muscle and losing fat at the same time. Sometimes it just takes time for the scale to adjust to what's actually going on in your body. Your body will adapt, right? Here's the thing is like people are always so quick to simplify losing weight as just a simple equation, calories in versus calories out. And it is, it is that simple. But then we become so blinded by the scale, the numbers that we see on the scale where it's like we're staying the same weight for a week, two weeks, or three days in this example. And we start panicking because we're not seeing progress on the scale. Whereas we know that we are in a calorie deficit. And if the if the equation is simple enough, where it's just calories in, calories out, and then you will lose weight as long as you stick to the program. And so the number one reason most people fail, 80% of dieters fail, is because they're not willing to be in it for the long haul. They're trying to lose weight way too quickly. And that's what happens with these fad diets and these super low calorie restrictions where they're in like 1500 2000 deficits where they're eating like 1200 1500 calories a day, you know, running on a treadmill burning a ton of calories going through grueling workouts, and they're just putting so much stress on their body. But they're also barely eating enough to replenish their body's needs. Not to mention the food choices. I don't even want to get into the food choices, like if it fits your macros or these fad diets or anything like that. But that's a whole nother beast to slay. But if you just simply look at the time horizon, people want to get results in like six months. They want to get rid of fat that they've been putting onto their body for 25 years in just six months time. It's like, no, Jonathan, you can't lose 25 years of fat by simply cutting for six to 12 months. Like that's not how it works. You can actually, you know, healthily do it in a year but it depends how overweight you are it depends how fat you are if you do it in a year and you're like obese you're gonna have some of that saggy skin right because it doesn't give your body enough time to adjust and adapt to the weight loss to kind of take away some of those you know fat cells and fix your skin and tighten up your skin and so you need to be careful when it comes to how fast you're trying to diet. And the reason people, you know, 80% of dieters regain the weight that they lost six to 12 months is because they'll lose the weight initially by going on a huge deficit for the first three months. And then they'll crash diet, they won't be able to sustain the diet because they're on a 1500 1600 calorie fucking diet. And they can't sustain that because they're hungry all day, they're grumpy, and they just want to eat normal food, it becomes not worth it to them. So then they regain the weight over the next three months, over the next six months, and then the diet is a complete fail. And they're like, oh, dieting just doesn't work for me. 
you know, dieting just, it doesn't work for someone like me. I've tried dieting. It just doesn't work. You know, diets don't work. And then the simple equation becomes a whole lot more complicated. The equation of calories in versus calories out becomes a whole lot more complicated because now we have to incorporate behavioral changes into your life so that you can realize that this stuff takes time. And so the, I think the pinpoint reason that people, most people, 80% of dieters fail and regain the weight that they lost is because they're simply not opening up the time horizon. If you open up the time horizon to not just six months, not just 12 months, but for the rest of your life, how are you going to be able to sustain a diet for the rest of your life? That's the question you should be asking yourself. And if you can't sustain the diet that you're on right now for at least, you know, an extended period of time, six to 12 months, then you shouldn't really be on that diet in the first place because it's probably too drastic. Now, there are certain scenarios like bodybuilding competitors like myself where I do have to be in a calorie deficit pretty significantly of about a thousand calories every single day because I'm only five and a half weeks out and I have to reach a certain stage weight to be able to step on stage without looking like an absolute fool, right? But this is, this is not a healthy approach. This is not the healthy way to go about it. The healthy way to go about it is to live a sustainable life, to sustain the diet for as long as you can until you're happy with your body fat levels and then you can reverse diet back up to start gaining some muscle and stay at those low body fat levels. And that is, in fact, what I'm going to do after my show is I'm going to reverse diet and pyramid my way back up by adding 100 calories each week so that my metabolism has time to readjust and so that I don't kind of crash and eat a whole bunch of food and gain 30 pounds and then be stuck with the metabolism of someone who is 155 pounds, 8% body fat, right? Because that would be horrible. Then I would be 185 pounds, only able to eat 1800 calories every single day because I have the metabolism still of the 155 pound me, but now I'm 185 pounds because I just ate a whole bunch of food and added a whole bunch of, you know, fat and water weight and all kinds of things like that, that are just not good. They're not advantageous. And that's the same thing that happens to people who try to diet too aggressively out the gate who try to lose you know 35 pounds in six months who try to lose 50 pounds in three months like people come to me and they're like I want to lose 100 pounds in three months I'm like dude not possible that is not possible it's not sustainable and I almost guarantee you're going to regain the weight that you lost six to 12 months down the line so you have to focus on the long-term approach. You have to focus on what is sustainable in my life for the long term. And if you can do that, if you can approach it from that perspective, then you'll be a lot more successful than some of these people who hop on the diet and 80% of them, they just regain the weight that they lost six to 12 months down the line. And then they end up giving up because they're discouraged, they're disheartened, and they're like, shit, diets don't work for me. They do work, Jonathan. They do work, Jonah. You just have to stick with them long enough to be able to see the results to be able to see the adaptation and unfortunately a week unfortunately three days is not enough time to see that drastic change all right so hopefully you guys got some value from this podcast hopefully i added some perspective to your life if you did get value make sure you of course screenshot my face share it to your instagram stories tag me at underscore garrett wolf and i will reshare it to my story and send you a free gift other than that guys that's it that's all that brings us to the end of today's podcast i hope you guys got some value once again and i will see you all in the next podcast episode peace peace thank you so much for tuning in today hopefully you got some value if you did get value and you want to learn a little bit more about how you can go from saggy flabs to six-pack abs just head over to my instagram at underscore garrett wolf dm me the word six-pack and i'll reach out to you and see if i can help again thank you guys so much for tuning in today and i will see you all in the next podcast episode peace peace